Kirby has always felt like a marquee Nintendo franchise that was yearning for something more. The sheer gameplay variety afforded by Kirby's inherent verticality and ability to suck in enemies is paralleled only by Super Mario Odyssey's Cappy, but a stringent loyalty to 2D platforming meant it never quite met its potential. Especially in the Switch era, the Pink Blob has been combined mostly to free-to-play games or more of the same platformers like Kirby's Star Allies. That's why we're pleased to report that Kirby and the Forgotten Land is one of the best games on the Switch. Yes, how Laboratories took quite the risk on Forgotten Land, with a brand new perspective that totally throws the classic Kirby formula off kilter. Aside from a slightly disengaging story and unbalanced co-op, it's proof not only of how well-suited Kirby is to 3D platforming, but a game to rival the likes of Super Mario Odyssey at the peak of first-party Switch output. If you've never played a Kirby game before, then it's a perfectly accommodating way into the franchise that gives you plenty of opportunities to fall in love with the character. For die-hard fans, it's a chance to finally see the floating pink hero reach his full potential, in a style that makes the series' future seem even more exciting. As hinted at, the story of Kirby and the Forgotten Land is a little bare-bones, but it gets more than the job done. Simply minding his own business on planet Popstar, Kirby is suddenly sucked into a vortex that spits him back out in a world that looks more like The Last of Us than typical Nintendo fare. From dilapidated skyscrapers to streets strewn with overgrown shrubbery, this new world is a place devoid of almost all life, and it's up to Kirby to discover exactly what happened. Hal Laboratories does a great job of varying the biomes you explore, with some desert levels playing host to dangerous underground moles and fiery volcano levels where every jump needs to be precise. The game is quite hands-off with its storytelling as well, instead leaving you to piece together the history behind these abandoned shopping malls, freaky boss monsters, and so on. That failure to properly flash out its story is one of Kirby and the Forgotten Land's few missteps. The first two acts are almost entirely devoid of explicit storytelling, aside from the general narrative thrust of Kirby needing to battle through each biome to save missing Waddle Dees. It all ramps up to 11 towards the end as you reach the final few boss fights that are faced with plenty of exposition. The most disappointing thing is that those story beats, which I won't spoil here, are actually quite interesting. They delve into the psyche behind some of the villains and the overarching prophecies that feed into our Kirby community. It's just a shame that it feels shoehorned in at last minute to the point where it ultimately feels quite forgettable. Kirby in the Forgotten Lands is all almost always flawless, but its shallow narrative and clunky storytelling are certainly a shame. Luckily, pretty much everything else in the game more than makes up for some slightly brushed plotting. The game is a classic 2D Kirby experience transposed to a 3D plane as you roam around decent-sized hub worlds, battling a range of cute foes, finding missing waddledees, and sucking up objects to transform the pink hero. Yes, the primary focus of pre-release hype for this game was the much-anticipated mouthful mode, and it does not disappoint. There's an astounding amount of objects that Kirby can suck up and then embody to take on their powers. Few are as instantly memeable as the car, which lets you zip around more open areas and some really fun time trial courses. There are also cones that let you stab cracked ground to unveil new areas, stairs to help you access hidden areas, and even more that appear organically as you progress through the game. It's an ingenious way to evolve Kirby's abilities, and it's now hard to envision a new game in the franchise not taking these abilities even further. The Switch isn't renowned for its graphical fidelity or processing power for that matter, but Kirby and the Forgotten Land makes brilliant use of the hardware. In fact, it's probably one of the best looking games on the system, with colours popping and vast landscapes shimmering in both handheld and docked modes. There were several occasions where, as a level of starts, you slowly pan up to the area you're about to explore and we will have to agape by just how pretty these worlds can look. Recent Switch games like Rune Factory 5 have shown how the Switch is occasionally not up to the task of running graphically intensive games, but Kirby handles it exceptionally well. What's also quite impressive is how you and a friend can play the entirety of Kirby and the Forgotten Land together. After completing a few early missions, you unlock the ability to play locally with a pal, one of you controlling Kirby, and the other a Waddle Dee. Playing co-op provides some of the game's most exciting moments as you coordinate boss battle strategy and try to jointly navigate obstacles and synchronicity. The only downside is that the co-op is very much unbalanced and, as expected, quite Kirby-centric. Despite getting played with a friend, only one of you can harness Kirby's mouthful mode powers using weapons like swords, hammers, and boomerangs. Teammate, however, they're relegated to be stuck as a lowly waddle who gets none of that excitement aside from a spear. Ooh. That means no becoming a car, no embodying a cone, and no sucking up new abilities as and when they appear. It's definitely a missed opportunity and makes the game that little bit less exciting for whoever's lumped with being the lonely waddledee. None of these minor gripes are enough to deter from the sheer joy of playing Kirby in the Forgotten Land. It's one of the best 3D platformers in recent memory and charts brand new territory for the franchise to expand upon in the future. While the story is a little haphazard, 
the charming delight of the gameplay, world design and characters more than make up for its misgivings elsewhere. If you're looking for a colourful adventure romp, there are many better than this.